Today we're going to talk about the Tevis anti-lock brake systems available on some Volkswagen models. Now we're going to look at how the system works, the component locations, and we'll also give you some troubleshooting tips. Now the first thing we should look at is the ABS unit itself. It's located here in place of our normal master cylinder and brake booster. Now the ABS unit consists of a fluid reservoir with a fluid level sensor, our tandem master cylinder, hydraulic brake booster, hydraulic pump, accumulator, and valve block. Now let's take a look at the system with a little more detail. The tandem master cylinder located up front here operates like a conventional master cylinder with one exception. It supplies brake pressure only to the front brakes. Boost pressure and rear brake pressure are regulated by a control valve here located in the hydraulic brake servo. Now the brake servo and the tandem master cylinder are considered one unit and replaced as such if ever required. Now an electrically driven hydraulic pump is located here at the bottom of the assembly. This pump is capable of developing over 210 bar or 3,000 pounds of system pressure. A relay for the hydraulic pump is located on the fuse relay panel. A power supply relay for the control unit is also located there. A multi-function switch is located here. The switch is used to control system pressure, inform the ABS control unit of system pressure, and to warn the driver if system pressure falls below 105 bar. The multi-function switch controls system pressure by turning the hydraulic pump on when the system pressure falls below 140 bar. The switch will turn the pump off when the pressure reaches 180 bar. If pressure drops below about 104 bar, the switch should turn both of these lights on to warn the driver that system pressure is too low. The pump will run long enough to pressurize the accumulator located here. When the system pressure reaches 180 bar, the pump will shut off and this accumulator will store the hydraulic pressure. Four wheel speed sensors are used, one for each wheel. Each wheel speed sensor consists of a permanent magnet and a coil. As the wheel spins, a tooth rotor that is attached to the wheel hub here moves past the wheel speed sensor. The teeth on the rotor cause an alternating voltage signal. The signal is used by the ABS control unit for wheel speed. The wheel speed sensors are available as a separate part. To remove them, just simply remove this bolt here, and then pull out the sensor. The electrical harness connectors for the front wheel speed sensors are located here at each shock tower. For the rear speed sensors, the connectors are located under the rear seats. On Jetta models, the ABS control unit is located in the trunk. For the control unit location on other models, refer to the repair manual microfiche. The ABS control unit will process these signals from the wheel speed sensors. And if it detects that a wheel is about to lock, it will operate these solenoids located here in the valve block to regulate the brake pressure in that brake circuit. During normal driving, if a fault occurs in the system, the ABS warning light located here should come on. Now this lets the driver know that the ABS system has been switched off. Both the ABS warning light and the brake warning light should come on from between 2 to 60 seconds each time the car is started. Now both warning lights should also come on if the brake fluid level falls below the minimum mark and system pressure falls below 104 bar. Now, by the way, we can test this complete system at the multi-pin connector 
located at the ECU using a multimeter. The complete testing instructions can be found in the repair manual microfiche or in the tech card that came with this tape. Now, if for any reason a hydraulic component in the system needs to be replaced, such as the pump, make sure that you pump the brake pedal 25 to 35 times with the ignition switched off. Now, pump the brake pedal until it gets hard. This should bleed off any pressure that is stored inside the hydraulic accumulator. The front brakes can be bled as you would a conventional system simply by pumping the brake pedal or using a pressure bleeder. However, to bleed the rear brakes, you must first turn the ignition on and hold the brake pedal slightly depressed. Now this does two things for us. Turning the ignition on allows the hydraulic pump to run and build up pressure in the system. Holding the brake pedal slightly depressed pushes the control valve forward in the brake servo and allows this pressure to pass through to the rear brakes. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you do not allow the hydraulic pump to run more than two minutes at a time without shutting off. Now the important things to remember are, when you first start the engine, both the ABS and the brake warning lights will come on from between 2 to 60 seconds. The lights should go out when the control unit has performed a sequence check and the system pressure is above 140 bar. The brake warning light should come on if the handbrake is on or if the hydraulic fluid level is below the minimum mark. The ABS warning light should come on and the anti-lock braking system should switch off if the control unit senses a fault in the system. Both warning lights should come on if the brake fluid level is below the minimum mark, the pressure in the accumulator is below 105 bar. If both warning lights come on, the anti-lock braking system is switched off. The entire system can be checked with a multimeter at the multi-pin connector from the ABS control unit. Remember to use the test leads with the proper flat terminals when doing these pin checks. When replacing a hydraulic component, remember to wear safety glasses, pump the brake pedal 25 to 35 times to drain the system pressure from the accumulator. To bleed the brake system, the front brakes can be bled like a conventional brake system. However, to bleed the rear brakes, you must have the ignition key switched on and the brake pedal must be held slightly depressed. 